All right, this is going to be an update and forecast on the poor air quality. In some cases, it's unhealthy to even hazardous throughout California, especially the Bay Area and the Central Coast. In this video, we're going to be talking about where the smoke is coming from and how long it's going to stick around. So just looking at the map right here, you can see this is the first indication of the culprit of the smoke. You can see where we have some of the purple that represents where the very hazardous air quality is. And it's up in the northwestern sections of California. But then, because of northerly winds, some of that smoke has been able to find its way around the Bay Area and the Central Coast. And it might confuse you why it would be so bad down here, but what's really happening is there's an inversion that's just been trapping the smoke down on the surface. And I especially notice things getting smokier last night. I finished the news at about 7 p.m. And at that point, I'd started talking about the smoke, but on satellite imagery, it looked pretty light out there. Didn't really see that much going on. Went and walked to dinner, maybe smelt the smoke a little, and then I walked back out there an hour later, and it smelled like I was in the middle of a campfire. So the reason for that is, throughout the afternoon hours, the upper level winds will blow the smoke from north to south, you can actually see it in the satellite imagery, coming all the way from Oregon, from coming from some of the fires in Northern California. Looks actually like most of the smoke is coming from Oregon. And then what happens is that smoke then gets blown into the Bay Area and the Central Coast. And late last night, our winds really calmed down. It pretty much does that every night and into the morning. And then that allowed that upper level smoke that was at a high altitude to just settle down to the surface. So that's what we're dealing with right now. That's why when you zoom in here, we have unhealthy, even a couple stations showing some hazardous air quality throughout the Bay Area and the Central Coast. So right there, you can see where the smoke is coming from. If we want to look at the forecast, oh, I could zoom in right here. So this is going to show this afternoon you notice the fire activity starts to pick up, might even be more active than it was yesterday. And then once again, the northerly winds are going to be blowing that smoke into the Bay Area and the Central Coast. So it looks like these smoky conditions are going to be sticking around at least through today. It looks like into Thursday, we have similar smoky conditions. And then let's take this to the very end and pause it because I believe it gets into Friday, and that should be when we start to see some clearing. Ah, interesting. So this is all the way, let's see. I always have trouble with this website. 4 a.m. Friday, it's still showing pretty smoky conditions, but then Friday we're supposed to have more onshore winds, and hoping that helps blow some of the smoke out so that it's clear this weekend. We'll look at some of the wind models in a second. First, I'll just zoom into here. I would say take this with a grain of salt. The Air Now website, for whatever reason, has been kind of underestimating the smoke, especially up in the Bay Area. And it was certainly underestimating it last night. It looks like it's finally figured out what's going on on the Central Coast, though. This is showing forecast for today, showing unhealthy air quality over the Central Coast. I think it'll be unhealthy over the Bay Area as well. And then for tomorrow, looks like those smoky conditions continue. The big question mark is if the winds will be strong enough on Friday to blow some of the smoke out. So now let's actually look at where this smoke is coming from. You can see up in Northern California, we have Smith River Complex, 92,000 acres. Looks like they have some aircraft on it right now, and that's actually pretty cool. I've never noticed this before, where if you hover over the aircraft, it actually shows the path that they've been taking. But the ones that you can see a little bit more of that orange, that means very active. That means where the fire was more active in the last 24 hours. That's the Blue Creek and Marlowe fires. That's about 11,000 acres. We got Bluff One and Mosquito fires around 9,000 acres and the Perch fire around 8,000 acres. So we had some of the smoke that's been coming into the Central Coast and Bay Area from there. So the key thing I wanna point out is if you live in the North Bay or San Francisco or the Central Coast, 
It smells like there's a fire right next to your house right now, but if you actually look at watch duty, we're not showing any fires around the Bay Area or Central Coast right now. So in terms of wildfire, you're safe, at least for the time being. I make sure to check the timestamp on this video. Um, but air quality, certainly a concern. And you, air quality, bad air quality does have negative health impacts. But remember in the satellite imagery, we saw this smoke coming all the way from Oregon. And it actually seems like most of the smoke that is coming into the Bay Area and the Central Coast is from this fire right here. This is the Anvil Fire. It's around 14,000 acres, and you can see all the activity that it had on it yesterday. I wonder if there's, yeah, there's some evacuation orders in place, 0% containment. And not seeing any photos. Ah, there's a photo right there. Yeah, you can see some of the smoke coming off of that fire yesterday. So, basic summary there is that there's fires up in northern, northwestern California and Oregon blowing smoke down into the Bay Area and Central Coast. Now let's talk about why this smoke might actually get worse over the next two days. So part of the reason for that, I think it's, and it's simply explained by looking at this image right here. You can see we have a red flag warning throughout the Sacramento Valley. And that's for a couple of reasons. First one is we have some drier air moving in. That's going to drop our relative humidities down into the teens and 20s this afternoon. And it looks like tomorrow afternoon. And then we're also going to have I, what I think is the bigger part of this story. We're going to have some kind of windier conditions than we have had recently. So this is what it looks like right now in terms of wind gusts. Key thing I want to point out, you can view this as kind of good news and bad news. So let's just fast forward to this afternoon, 2 p.m. You can see we have some of the windier conditions picking up. Uh, that would be gusts around 28 miles per hour. National Weather Service was calling it the potential for some 30 to 35 mile per hour gusts. And I believe the windier conditions are going to be Thursday afternoon. Yeah, we have a 31 mile per hour gust Thursday at 2 p.m. What I want to point out though, is that it seems like the windier conditions are actually off of the coast. That's where you see a 40 mile per hour gust right there. So that could be good and bad news. The good news is that we don't have 40 to 45 mile per hour gusts over land because that could lead to some pretty rapid fire growth if any fires do pop up. Although 30 to 35 mile per hour gusts would be enough to spread a fire pretty quickly, which is why we have that red flag warning in place. The bad news for the gusty conditions off of the coast is you can see what that did yesterday. Took some of the smoke that was off the coast and just launched it down to the Bay Area and the Central Coast. So that right there is a big part of the problem with our air quality in the Central Coast and the Bay Area right now. So now this is Thursday afternoon. That's, I think Thursday morning is actually going to be where we have maybe the late, late Thursday morning might be when we have the highest fire danger because that's where we're going to have some gusty winds. You see a 31 mile per hour gust right there. Your humidity is dropping down. That's about a 21% humidity. Then let's fast forward into the afternoon. Looks like 21% still as you get into Thursday at 5 p.m. So you know what's interesting is I was reading the red flag warning on the National Weather Service and they're saying conditions might improve Thursday afternoon because the onshore flow is going to be picking up. But I maybe that's true for the Bay Area. You see a bit more of the moisture getting in there but I'm not seeing that for where we actually have the red flag in place. It looks like we have extremely dry conditions as we get into Thursday afternoon. Maybe I misread it and they're actually saying Friday afternoon, but that actually looks pretty dry as well. Now, if we look at the wind gusts on Friday afternoon, that's where things do improve. That's where just about 13 miles per hour and it does look like it's a bit more of a westerly flow. So hopefully that can clear some of the smoke out of the Bay Area and the Central Coast. That's at least what I'm hoping for. That, that is what they're saying on the National Weather Service as well. It's that we could expect some of the clearing to happen late Thursday night 
and into Friday. Although, I'm going to wait to make that call just because it really depends on how active the fires are the next couple of days because that's going to decide how much smoke they end up kicking up. And you can imagine different levels of smoke will have different levels of clearing. So, yeah, it looks like we have smoky conditions through today, through tomorrow. The question mark will be if it can clear out on Friday. It certainly looks like the fire weather conditions improve on Friday. So there should at least be less smoke produced. But then I want to talk about something that is very interesting for next week. Now, I purposely save this for the end of the video because I usually have like a three-day rule on weather forecasts. Outside of three days, I'm pretty skeptical about what's going to happen. But a lot of the models are starting to converge on maybe the first good rainstorm for the Pacific Northwest this next week. You can see the timing on that, September 25 to 28, unsettled weather pattern next week. You can see the storm track dipping down below Washington, Oregon, and into Northern California. This would be a fall-like pattern, bringing widespread rain chances back to interior NorCal. Below normal temperatures, periods of gusty winds, stay tuned for details. So this actually sounds like a storm. So let's check out exactly what's expected to happen. Clicking all the way through here, this is into Friday, into Saturday. There's already some showers you can see popping up into Washington and Oregon. But then you start to see some of the heavy rain showing up on Monday. So right about there. See the heavy rain move into Northern California, Washington, and Oregon. And I'm curious to see the exact timing that it has on it right now. So let's switch over to local. And let's zoom on down here. It's maybe the first showers. That could actually help us out with some of the fires burning in the northwestern portions of California. This storm could be enough to maybe just put these fires out, which would be pretty great news because those are that's all that's really going on in terms of wildfire for california right now so let's zoom in here heavy rain starts to show up maybe 2 a.m on monday i guess one concern on the fires would be mudslides or debris flows because when a fire happens it burns out the vegetation where the roots are holding the hillside in place and then when you get some heavy rainfall over those fires, which it looks like the rainfall is going to be heavy. That's where the hillside is no longer held in place by the root systems. And that's where you can have some dangerous mudslides. So yeah, that's, that's something I'm curious to see if they'll have some warnings pop up for that, or at least some advisories go out. And then we see the heavy rainfall move through 8 a.m. on Monday. Again, take all the timing of this with a grain of salt. It's more than three days out, so we'll most likely see the timing and totals on this change. But it is interesting to get an early indication of what's going to happen. So then it looks like some of the heavy rain, that's going to be right on your cold front right there. You can actually see where the cold front is. That's where the cold air is moving in. So then you have the warm air that it's replacing being pushed up above the cold front as it rises it cools down forms clouds you have a lot of your rainfall right along that cold front then it goes into northern california or the north bay around maybe 11 a.m monday and then the model ends as it's potentially going to go down into the central coast but at that point it looks like the rainfall is pretty light so it looks like this is mostly for washington oregon and northern california We'll be able to actually, yeah, I'll click through this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday storm arrives. You can see pretty large totals. That's four to five inches where you see that yellow color in Washington and Oregon. And then since I mostly focus on California in this channel, let's go to NorCal. And then one little trick, you can go the first and then click backwards and it goes to the last Looks like, yes, over directly over some of our fires that we have in Northwestern California. We can actually match up these two maps right here. See where the fires are? See where the total rainfall is showing? That could be two to three, maybe even four to five inches in the very Northwestern portion of California. And I wasn't planning on showing this, but 
I have been covering the drought for, I don't know how long, it's been maybe a year now, and all I've been waiting for is, all right, not finding it there. All I've been waiting for is the drought to be completely gone in California. And there's one pesky little area of California that is holding on. So where you see the yellow, that's just abnormally dry. But look at that, 0.22% of California is still in moderate drought. If we zoom all the way in, you can see that 0.22% that's hanging on right there, Del Norte County. Once that's gone, the drought is completely done in California. And if we click in here, that's exactly where right now the models are saying we could get four to five inches of rainfall. So this storm that's expected to come in on Monday could be the official end of the drought in California, even though the drought has basically ended. So I'm gonna be very interested to follow that, but it's also going to be interesting to follow this smoke over the next couple of days. Looks, again, if you're just joining the live stream, it looks like it's very unhealthy air quality out in the Bay Area, Central Coast right now. It's smoke coming down from the Northwestern fires and from Oregon. Expected to be continued bad smoke through Wednesday, Thursday. The question mark is if things start to clear up on Friday, we do have the potential for more smoke to be created over the next two days because of some of the increased fire conditions with relative humidities dropping into the teens, some wind gusts up to 30, 35 miles per hour, and stronger wind gusts off of the coast that are going to be just pushing more of this smoke down into the Bay Area and Central Coast. So that's all kind of the bad news for the next two days. Looks like fire activity is going to continue. There is the potential for more fires popping up and air quality maybe even just getting worse over the next couple days. The good news is that there is what could be a pretty significant storm on the horizon for Washington, Oregon, and Northern California towards the beginning of next week. And I will definitely cover that as we get closer to that event because it looks like it could be the official end of the drought in California. Stay tuned on that, and thanks for watching.